Now this morning, we have the privilege of having an extremely interesting conversation. And in studio with me this morning, I have the Honorable Minister Shamfa Kujo-Lewis. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good who morning, is Ms. also thank you. the Minister for Sport. Now, we want to thank you so much for coming in this morning and being in studio with us as we talk about a number of topics, including the budget and your mm -hmm. recent budget presentation. Mm -hmm. Now, in your presentation, you made a number of remarks, but one of the remarks that was common to your colleague, um, mm -hmm. Minister Ayanna Webster Roy, was that everybody would like to have more. Mm -hmm. And you indicated that you believe also that Tobago can do what it needs to do with the allocation that it has been given. Can you tell us more about that? Okay, so of course, everybody wants more. That is, that is true. Um, at the end of the day, we all make our proposals to the Ministry of Finance and uh, they would respond accordingly. For me in the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, or request uh, started at about $1.6 billion and we ended up with $400 million. Now that's a far cry from the request, especially with the number of projects that ought to be done in the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, because it's not just sport uh, we're working with in that ministry. Uh, we married two large portfolios in 2020 but the budget never really complement the marriage, <laughs> but we've been doing the best we can with what we have over the years. Uh, alongside that, we have debt uh, from the past. The last time I checked, for instance, with our community centers, uh, we are now paying 2022 bills for community centers. So, uh, so whilst you may see a line item of, uh, let's say, $10 million or so, like it, it, it doesn't mean much to me <laughs> in that the uh, outstanding money is owed to the contractors for years past. Um, it's much, much, much more than that. So it's like we've been playing a kind of uh, catch up. But at the end of the day, it's about uh, striking a balance and doing the best we can with what we have. We, I always like to look at it from the perspective of being an international trade major. Uh, we we are price takers we're not price makers as energy being our main industry uh, we don't get to set the price uh, and there are so many things that can happen in the volatile economic environment that will cause the price to change so you may start your year or start planning for next two three years at an oil and gas price of x when really and th truly when that time comes it's much less and you have to pretty much take whatever price you you get um so uh that's where we are this is how much we have to work with and uh this is the allocation that we've gotten so we do the very best with what we um can. you responded to the argument of tobago's allocation versus trinidad allocation by indicating that a lot of the times you have to come out of your budget to assist tobago athletes I don't think I said it like that. Let's okay. say don't I, I don't call it uh, I don't call it Tobago allocation versus Trinidad allocation. No, I said you it, didn't say that. But you know, the, yeah. there is the argument in the space that there is what Tobago is getting, and then there's what central government is getting. Right. So, so, so that's that, very different from Tobago getting versus Trinidad getting, because I think the impression given by many of the speakers coming out of Tobago and the House of Assembly is that the THA budget is the only money is being spent in. Tobago. And that's not so. Uh, it's being said that uh, th this is what we get for Tobago and all the rest in Trinidad. How could that be fair? That is not so because throughout many other ministries, for instance, Ministry of Social Development, uh, all the pensions paid in Tobago are paid by out of that central government allocation. It's not a Trinidad allocation because it's being spent in Tobago also. All, every senior citizen receiving pension in Tobago, every person receiving public assistance grant, disability grant, and so on from the Ministry of Social Development, uh, it's not coming out of the THA budget. It's coming out of the central government allocation. So to say it's a Trinidad allocation is, is not a right thing to say. So I always try to correct that. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And so in response to that argument, you mm -hmm. indicated that a lot of the times you fund a number of Tobago sporting projects and athletes who come to you, yeah. you know, for assistance, like the rugby players and, mm -hmm. and others. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that it would be easier for everyone if there were greater collaboration between yourself and the THA, specifically the Division of Sport? I think that there is, there is collaboration. Uh, because the benefit is that having a central government and the Tobago House of Assembly both offering grants to uh, Tobagonians, it gives Tobagonians uh, two bites of the cherry or many bites of the cherry because I know Tobagonian athletes and organizations who apply to the THA. They apply also to the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. They apply to NLCB. They apply to Office of the... And sometimes it's late, late, late when you catch that somebody went double dipping or triple dipping or quadruple dipping. But at least it gives them the opportunity to, if they don't get through here, or if they're too short on time at this spot, they can uh, ask somewhere else. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Right. And I think that your colleague would have echoed the same sentiment yeah. yesterday when she was here. Um, but is it that you guys have a greater relationship now compared to when there was the previous secretary for community development? Um, and with that being said, there is the, I think is a I am sport. I choose sport. I choose sport, yeah. TT, mm -hmm. who has the responsibility for also helping to assist with equipment and yeah. facilities mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a big struggle that the THA faces to mm -hmm. be able to keep up with maintaining a number of the sporting facilities. So has that conversation I taken think, place with this new yeah. secretary to ensure that there's collaboration? I think that any ministry, I know that any ministry I go to, I try to I make sure that whatever services we offer, we extend uh, to Tobago from being Minister of Tourism in 2015 and bringing to the first time for t to Tobago the Tobago uh, Accommodation Upgrade Program where uh, the government go gives 40% to you when you upgrade your rooms and so on to so, um, the state to get away program and then we went on to ministry of youth where we support youth organizations youth and sport and now in the ministry of sport and community development uh through programs like empower tt we we partner we collaborate uh in sports especially or sporting camps we do it in collaboration with the tobago uh house of assembly and i think we've had a smooth relationship i don't think it's based on um secretary to secretary mm -hmm. um I, I think I always try to extend the olive branch and speak from a place of, of, of peace. And if I don't have any control over my counterpart uh, attitude or, or positioning and posturing, uh, some people choose to promote politics over development. Uh, but for me, I know as a politician, uh, we're all passing through. Yeah, and we are not in control of our terms. Yeah, you may plan, ooh, I'm going to be minister next. That's not your say. That's the people's say. So um, no politician anywhere should think that they're in control of uh, their destiny. That's, that's for the people. So I know my job is to leave it better than I met it, no matter who's in the Tobago House of Assembly or who's sitting next to me in the central government. When you're given a position of leadership, you come in, you do what you have to do to the best of your ability for the time that the people will have you until the people will have you no more. I remember in a conversation with the secretary mm -hmm. for um, community development, Joel mm -hmm. um, Samson, he indicated that you guys have a great communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see that you were at a number of events together yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So does this mean that we can see greater collaboration in the future between the ministry and the yeah, division. I, yeah, and I think that we already have that that good relationship. We are supposed to meet during the upcoming weeks to talk about uh, some of the programs that we have that could benefit uh, Tobago. And believe you me, there are some Tobago programs that we benefit from too. Uh, Tobago has this strong, uh, re this strong system as it relates to community development and uh, how. Probably because you're dealing with a smaller number of community centers and groups, you have a, a real solid system. So we look at some of what you're doing and do it in Trinidad too. Trust me, there's so much to learn 
from each other and we could get so much further if we continue to strengthen our collaboration and relationship. I'm glad that you said that because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess you're, it's the same thing with your colleague. She also echoed that there were a number of events and um, programs that she has collaborated mm -hmm. with the division on. So we are happy to see that there is that collaboration and working together between the ministry and the THA. Um, when it comes to young persons seeking opportunities within Tobago East or West, mm -hmm. there's oftentimes pr programs that we are unaware of. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, there's NETCO that is accessible at the office of mm -hmm. the MP. A lot of young persons don't know about this, as well as some of the activities and programs that you said both Tobagoonians and Trinidadians benefit mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. A lot of persons still don't know that they mm -hmm. can go to the central government to benefit from these mm -hmm. programs. So do you think that it's an issue of communication and that we need to get the message out there better for your for persons in Tobago to know that they have access to a lot of these services? I think all around it's a matter of uh, communication and a matter of seeking your own interest too. Uh, because when we, when we want to find out the juice and the sauce that's going on on social media. We like those pages. So the news comes to our phones and we can circulate and so on. But uh, when it comes to programs for development, we're a little slower on that. I think that through the ministry's website, through our Facebook pages, and also in our capacity as MPs, we circulate the information. I wish across all ministries and departments it were the same. So for instance, I can direct somebody where to go to find the forms and the guidelines and the rules for applying for grants in the Ministry of Sports and Community Development. I can't send somebody, I don't know where to send somebody to get a form to apply to the Lalon Gordon Fund or to apply for a grant in uh, the Tobago House of Assembly as it relates to, to, to athletes. So I guess that's why it's probably easier for them to come to me or come to the Ministry because it's at the click of a button. So I think uh, uh, the, the House of Assembly too can work on uh, digitalizing, uh, making forms, even if you put in forms on a table, on a desk in a, in, in a department, so that people could come and access the forms, you know. But at the end of the day, we as young people, I, we're like, oh no. <laughs> young people, the people who are within that age group that are looking for those kinds of opportunities, they um, have to seek, seek it out because when you want to know what new Jordan drop or new Nike's drop, you find it. You have a way of going to find it. You want to learn how to do your eyebrows better, you find a way on YouTube. You know, but for you go looking for it, you know, so we have to train or, or, or you to just really go looking for these opportunities and season these opportunities while, while they exist. Excellent. So we're going to take a quick break right here. and We're going to be back right after this. See you soon, guys. Mm -hmm. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. If you are now joining us, man, that is too bad because we have been having a really interesting conversation this morning with the Honorable Shamfa Kujo Lewis, who is the Minister of Sport and Community Development, as well as the MP for Tobago West. Good morning and welcome back, Minister. Good morning, good morning, Tobago. Thank you for having me. Right. So we have been talking a bit about the budget allocation, but... There have been the sentiment that had Tobago or the THA particularly supported the Tobago autonomy bill, Tobago would have gotten much more mm -hmm. um, from the budget. But my question is, if there just isn't enough in the pie to go around, mm -hmm. if Tobago had that 6.8%, where would that money have come from to give Tobago that if there just isn't enough overall? Okay. All right. Uh, as it relates to that, we have to remember that the 6.8% um, doesn't just come dry just like that. It also comes with additional responsibilities. So um, the way the bills are set up, um, it increases the level of um, not only autonomy, but responsibility for the Tobago House of Assembly. So some areas previously managed or, or where the expenses have been covered by central government would now be covered by the uh, Tobago House of Assembly. So um, that's just what it is, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so you, you explained it in a way where I think a lot of person can understand. Mm -hmm. So instead of, as you indicated before, some of the programs being under the central government and mm -hmm. Tobagolians being able to benefit, it will just solely be under the THA now. I think that more responsibility, I, I wouldn't say solely, because once we are, once we are in this relationship um, of, of being a unitary state, two islands, one country, we would always help each other. I believe that uh, tremendously. Central government will always assist. If you're running a Trinidad only program, it, 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 you're not really digging into the true wealth and, 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 and strength of the country. And you're not, remember when you invest in Trinidad, uh, and when you invest in Tobago, you're also investing in Trinidad and Tobago. So if you're making an investment like as it relates to a program and you can educate Tobagonians one time with it, why not? So for instance, a skills training in uh, under community development, uh, the THA has a program and central government has a program. And there were those in the THA who believed that, well, uh, we should be ex not extending our central government programs to Tobagonians. But if they're applying, what should I do? Say no, wait until the assembly um, does its program or if our program at ECCL is internationally accredited, what should I tell Tobagonians? Well, uh, Tobago House of Assembly is responsible for community development training in Tobago. Don't apply here or you're not. You can't do that. If you're a human being with a heart and people are applying to better themselves, no matter what your allocation is, your human instinct would say, hey, go ahead and assist. Yeah, it costs nothing or not much to assist. And even if it costs you, the return on the investment is so much more, not only for Tobago, but for Trinidad and Tobago. So you have persons trained in ECCL handicraft um, uh, courses. When they get their certificate, they can go back and teach the same Tobago House of Assembly or Tobago people. And they could be on Craft Hub TT where you can teach and learn and, and build your network internationally. So it's a benefit to that person individually, a benefit to Tobago, a benefit to Trinidad and Tobago and to the world. And that's what development is all about. Right. But mm -hmm. to get Tobago that 6.8, mm -hmm. does it mean that half of a, of a ministry's budget that has a program that is Trinidad and Tobago based gets mm -hmm. cut in half? For instance, some of your programs, does mm -hmm. it get cut in half and half of that goes towards the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport? In, oh, order, yeah. in order to get that 6.8 from Tobago, because the, the size of the pie doesn't change, mm -hmm. but Tobago's allocation is now changing right, because some of, of the, the things, increase in responsibility. Yeah, but some of the things that uh, Trinidad, that central government would have been uh, responsible for or, or spending on, the assembly would now take on fully you know so um that's the way i see it and from sitting on the joint select committee for all this time and listening to the conversation participating in the development and the, the framing of the um the draft legislation that's what i understand it to be it's about more more autonomy more responsibility also so that you can better go in the direction that you want to go and what about the aspects of the bill that persons may not be in agreement about that may cause some pushback from Tobagonians? Mm -hmm. How do you find a middle ground where we get the bill passed and not stall, but mm -hmm. some of the recommendations that are mm -hmm. being put out there still get implemented yeah. before going um, to be passed before the parliament? I think it's all, um, under all about understanding that it's a conversation. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. It's discussion not only Tobago to Trinidad or Tobago to Tobagonians. We are in a system where you have the national parliament. That is the only place that you can change law in Trinidad and Tobago. So you don't just have to convince Tobagonians about the Tobago's position. You have to convince, uh, or, or you don't just have to convince the government. You have to convince other members of parliament and other Trinidadians too. That is why when uh, Mr. London, former chief secretary, did his consultations, there were some consultations in Tobago, in Trinidad too, because these MPs also have to understand what it takes in order to uh, get Tobago where it needs to be so that it benefits not only Tobago, but Trinidad and Tobago, because if Tobago... Um,
does well, then the country mm-hmm. does, does well. So to me, it's about the conversation and understanding that, okay, when you come to the table with a want saying, I want this part of the pie or I need this part of the pie, we have to understand and be mindful that there are other people who have to get from the pie too. And if we want more, we all have to make more. We rise together, we fall together. Together we aspire, together we achieve. But if we strengthen uh, the places that have the ability to be strengthened and really give back to Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago, then let's go ahead and do it. So um, it's, it's a conversation and we're not going to win this battle or we're not going to win in this journey by shouting and cutting and fighting uh, Port of Spain. If we ain't get where we go, we go mash it down and so on. Uh, when you look at the journey in in other countries that had a similar situation like 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 Tobago and, and Trinidad, it was done incrementally. Yeah, it's like planning. It's like planning a football game. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, you would know who are the persons that you can get through. To get to the other side and you would know what tactics to use and so if I want to get from me to you right using this mode might get me to here I might not like that because I'm trying to get to by you right so what do I do not make it over this little area because I don't like the mode or make it over there and then so that's one step done and then get to the next stage so I'm saying based on the conversations, the negotiations that have been done, the advice of the international technocrats and so on, that we should move in the direction of passing the bills. And then when you get there, you see how it works and you continue going until you get to where you want to be. But to simply, to just halt the whole process, we are throwing out so much work and we're causing the next generation to pretty much have to start over. I remember um, when I eventually caught on to this Trinidad Tobago issue, I heard uh, Ho Choi Charles on the uh, radio one time and he was, the whole Ada Ring Bang thing was uh, taking place and he was on the, he was explaining how he had to do this investment because he wasn't getting enough money from central government my mother was ironing and I turned to my mother and like what have you guys been doing yeah what what did you do in your youth what did you do in your time and she said Gil this thing has been going on for decades don't worry you gotta have your part I'll come here I'll come and here we are still trying to make this thing move if if in uh, 1990 uh, the person sitting at the table at the time said, here now, this is not where we want to be, so we're not even taking that 40 in 1990. Then today's generation would still be having those old conversations of the 80s and the 70s. But 19, um, at 40 in 1990 took us to a small part and opened up more doors and windows and opportunity for us to push right. to get to where we are now. So I'm saying, I'm taking that after talking. If I recognize, you see that member for that area there? I can't get past here with that point. Okay, let me wiggle my way this way. Be- because if I don't move, I remain in the same position and the conversation going nowhere and Tobago not getting to where it needs to be. You know, so from being in government and being in opposition and seeing both sides of the conversation, it's 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 something else. And I'm, we have I'm to glad that to you navigate brought up it. the conversation and that mm-hmm. you are open to having the conversations mm-hmm. to hear what are the points of contention that Tobagonians still have mm-hmm. and how you can return to the parliament and advocate, you know, effectively mm-hmm. on behalf of Tobagonians. When talking about the budget and Tobago's allocation and how the THA has been managing the allocations, you indicated that for a while you have not seen them go back to the house and debate mm-hmm. after the allocation mm-hmm. has been given. Mm-hmm. Talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, that's a part of um, that's a part of what the budgetary exercise used to be back then. We come to the part to the House of Assembly in June. We say this is what we want to 
do this is what we how much we want and so on and after getting the allocation there used to be a retreat which i'm sure there still is a retreat but then they come back to the house and say this is what we're going to do this is where we're going to go i don't remember seeing that recently i would like to see that i'm also a huge advocate for um public finance committees and publicizing the committee's work um just the same way in the parliament we face the the joint select committee of uh the public finance committee saying how we spend our money explaining the the decisions made and the things that we have done i think that tobago needs to move to that place of really having the public involved that was one of my uh recommendations when we were drafting the bills and i was told well you can't really put that in a bill that really is the house that's the business of the house i hope we get there i hope the house gets there someday so that the state uh, enterprises under the THA so that the THA itself would account to the people as to how it has spent the monies and and so on so that Tobagonians could better understand because when the public doesn't understand what's going on it's easy to accuse persons of mismanagement and of doing uh, bad things yeah but if the public is kept abreast of, of what's taking place then I think that would be better for all of us I, I see that they do have a sitting coming up after mm -hmm. their retreat where they mm -hmm. will be going back and reviewing That's the budget. Good. And That's I good. see that it was done last year as well. So mm -hmm. it is important for the sake of transparency for them mm -hmm. to continue doing that. Um, a lot of Tobagonians are feeling as though when we have Tobagonians in the parliament that don't advocate for more, it's as though they are putting the politics before the island's development instead mm -hmm. of really advocating for Tobago mm -hmm. to get the resources that it needs to get to the place where Tobago needs to be. Mm -hmm. Can you speak Before to that? Before we get there, I want to go back to you saying that the exercise was done. Uh, this is going to be done 2023, this year. And, and they have and a, done in, a in 2023. It goes beyond the sitting. It goes to the committee work. I keep talking about joint select committees and really having your state enterprises and so on reporting, saying this is what we did and so on. Sometimes I set out a plan for my ministry or for the state entity under my ministry and when they go to the joint select committee joint select committee tell them hey we need you to get down into that community and they had to change it you know you know or they have to um, at least consider as long as as much as their uh, economic ability would allow them to to do so and it, as as Tobagonians, can you truly say that you know and understand everything that's going on as it relates to the spending or do you think that there's enough access to the information can i switch on my tv and find out is there a place for me to go to see okay for instance a hundred million dollars was given uh at the mid-year last i think it's last year for the payment of outstanding um debts right do we know how much of that was spent on this? Do we know who was paid? And so on, the way the committee and the, the reporting goes, I don't think that the House of Assembly has gotten to, to, to um, that level. You just asked me another question that I forgot, and I don't want to forget your question. I think I forgot the question as well, too, but we could move, move oh, ahead. Boy. I want, I want, we, 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 we will go back to that one. We will go back to uh -huh. that one, because I had that one at the top of my mind to ask. Uh -huh. But, um, when it comes to how Tobago holds mm. Tobago accountable, mm -hmm. not just the THA, but also the representatives mm -hmm. in the parliament ah, as yes, being that's what you were talking responsible about. Yeah. for our development. <laughs> we want to see Tobago being advocated for. Now, I have followed you I'm for a long time, so I know that mm -hmm. you have stood in the parliament mm -hmm. and bulldoze your way through advocating for Tobago. Mm -hmm. So when we have a situation where Tobago wants more to develop mm -hmm. and we don't hear the ministers coming forward and saying, well, we deserve more. It, the question is, is it that our representatives are putting the politics before ah, governors? I, I, I'm glad you raised that question because I recognize that it is a chorus and, and a strategy of the current Tobago House of Assembly representatives to give the impression that the MPs or, or PNM MPs only speak to their party. And because we are in a national party, we, we put the PNM first. That is not so. That is not so. We, we, we speak the way we speak because we see the full pity. You, you have nothing to gain in shouting to Trinidad or shouting to Port of Spain. You have to understand the full picture and then you see 
where you can get best out of it. Yes, I said when I spoke that we all deserve more. That yes, Tobago deserves more. The Ministry of Sport deserves more to get to, to do what it needs to do. We all want more, but we have to be mindful of the size of the pie, of how much money we're making right now, of the debt that we have to pay to um to international organizations from whom we have borrowed, of the debt that we have to pay to, to former uh for works that were done previously, and we have to look at where we're going right now. So of course we will all want more. Every to be going in, I think, uh, based on what we want to do to, to catch up with the rest of the world and to re truly recognize the dreams and aspirations of our youth because these young people are dreaming big and doing wonderful things. And with that said, I must say I'm so excited that the TTPS was able to return the equipment of um, keys studio here. studio I, I i followed that and they are doing amazing work the creatives in tobago they are who the the future economy should really the, the economy of tomorrow should truly truly be focused on so let me get back to ayana webster roy and shamfa kojo being a voice for tobago not only in the parliament also in, in the cabinet it is ayana webster roy and Shamfa sitting on the cabinet that has brought to Tobago the, the Hillsborough Dam project finally being realized. That was promised since I was a little girl going to Mason Hall Government School. Uh, us getting two, two ferries. We purchase them. We own them as a people. We're not leasing or renting them. We talk about a uh, wastewater treatment plant, the expansion of electricity, a, a cove, all the benefits brought to Tobago over the years. Roxborough Police Station. Chilvan Police Station. I remember being a member of the opposition in the parliament and asking the then gov UNC government, when would this be done? And the, the minister used to respond and say, soon, soon. Then I used to file another question. How soon is soon? Soon, soon. I just had to settle with soon. And here we have a cabinet and a government finally delivering a, on large scale projects, big ticket projects. And we are being told that we are not speaking up for Tobago and we're delivering nothing to Tobago. Anybody who has eyes to see would see and ears to hear would hear. But if you have a different agenda, if you are politically blind, you will not see those things. And it is time for Tobago to, which is a very politically charged place. Uh, we, the seniors in this thing, have to have a different conversation for the sake of our young people who are coming up or else we are going to be uh, in this political battle for the rest of our lives and you would see no true development. We have to, the same way you charge the PNMites to, to do for Tobago and so on, you have to charge your own other, whether it's PDP, TPP, everybody else. It can't be wrong for PNM and right for, for, for the other side. And that is how we end up in a lot of the trouble we end up in as it relates to the, the uh, degradation of values in our community, in our church, in our governments and so on, because we are not being fair. We are being hypocrites. Yeah. So you would, you you would not accept corruption under the PNM, but you have nothing to say about corruption under anybody else. There are some people who would say to you, as long as it's not the PNM, we're taking it. You understand what I'm saying? So we as Tobagonians have to be mindful about the conversation that we're having, about what we're accepting as Tobagonians, and the, the future that we are building and preparing for those young children who are coming up. Because by the time they get up, political colors are going to change. The players may not be around anymore, but they are going to be ha having to grapple with their future. Yeah, and making it in their time. And we have to ease off the politics and think about our Tobago development. I'm glad that you said that. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back right here. See you soon. update now the time has been running away from us as we have been having an interesting conversation right here with the honorable shamfa kujo lewis who is the minister of sport and community development and the mp for tobago west now before we left off we spoke about the budget as well as the tobago autonomy bill that's in the parliament that we are going to see coming very soon before the end of the very year very soon yeah very soon all right but there are a number of projects and plans that you have for your constituency so mm -hmm. the people want to know what is happening and what can they tap into to benefit in from tobago. what you have going on here in tobago, in tobago west uh, let's talk about what has been going on and what we will uh, continue to 
deliver. Uh, you know what's interesting? People expect physical infrastructure from parliamentarians. And we know that physical development in Tobago is primarily under the Tobago House of Assembly. So people, because they don't see you building a building, they feel like you're doing nothing. And if you go try to build a building, the TAJ will put you right in your place, you know? Um, but anyway, I believe in people development. I believe in empowering people. And uh, since becoming a minister, whether it's sport, tourism, youth, uh, you name it, it's all about making sure the programs of the ministry reach the people in Tobago and they can develop new skills and empower themselves so that no matter who's in power as it relates to the politics, they can stand on their own, own their own businesses, be educated. That's what it's really about. So through uh, my ministry of sport and community development, we work with athletes. We provide funding to athletes. We bring our training programs to Tobago also. Last year, we trained persons how to uh, do coaching, um, administration, management for sport. We did some specific work with uh, coaches in collaboration with the two THA for to help them to work with those with disabilities and and special needs we've brought our i choose sport program to tobago we have several tobago um, ambassadors on the i choose sport uh program and that is changing the culture and developing an attitude and a belief that students can excel at academics and at athletics at the same time in order to to change our uh, um to change our position or improve our position as it relates to sport, we have to tap into these youngsters from an earlier age. Correct. Their school age, you cannot teach an old dog new an old dog new tricks. So you get into the primary schools, the secondary schools, and you introduce them to many disciplines of sport that we do through the I True Sport program. It took a long while before the House of Assembly, about a year or so before the House of Assembly accepted gave us a response allowing us to interact with Tobago schools, but we're glad that they're finally on board with that. Uh, we have our sport camps in the East. At the Easter time, we do the one in moto sport, in moto, uh, moto, they help them improve their motor skills so that the, you see youngsters can't hop, can't catch, can't do the basic things because they are so glued to, to phones and iPads and so on. So it's getting them out there and teaching them how to catch and so on. We've done that in Tobago. We do it again in collaboration with the House of Assembly. Same thing with our camps during the July-August period, introducing these youngsters to different sporting disciplines, funding uh, governing bodies and their activities activities, funding athletes who are unable to get support from the Tobago House of Assembly or need additional support. We, we do all of that. We have the Prime Minister's Best Village Trophy Competition, which is national in nature. Tobago also benefits uh, from that. We have uh, Empower TT. We, every cohort, we've had pe uh, persons from Tobago participating. And this is where we take unemployed uh, young men who have lost their way, have no subjects, lost direction, looking to get back on track to stay away from a life of crime. We prepare, we pr provide a space for them to be mentored by older, more seasoned uh, professionals, or whether they're into DJing, being doctors, lawyers, you name it. And we, create a space for them to share as men. Women are not allowed in the room as an M zone. Then they go through life skills and an apprenticeship so that they can learn to do what they want to do. Then we place them in programs for further training and so on. We are now experimenting with a project called the Boss Lady Project. It's not large in number because we utilize girls, ladies who apply to the men's program. We said, okay, we can't send them away, okay. but we can't put them in the men's program either. So we, we experimenting with this thing called Boss Lady Project, where we're teaching them skills, how to put in eyelashes, how to make wigs, uh, event coordination and uh, decorating, how to do desserts, how to cater to an event, just little things that they can learn and feel empowered. But then we work with NEDCO to help them develop their business, their entrepreneurial skills and give them an apprenticeship through the She Trades, she Trades program at the Ministry of Trade. Of course, we help. That's also in collaboration with the EU in Trinidad. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so we also um, make sure that Tobagonians get access to what is offering by other ministries um, in, under the central government. In agriculture, you have farmers accessing the agro-processing and the um, incentives. Uh, that's a $100,000 grant from the Ministry of Agriculture. You have under so many different areas, youth, uh, youth bodies applying to the Ministry of Youth, those in culture. Uh, yesterday we distributed 
uh, some checks assisting persons who have cultural activities in Tobago. As we just assisted Tobago Drama Guild, who needed help to go out internationally to uh, to do a play, and it's all about investing in Tobagonians. I don't believe in the government doing everything for you. If you, as a community, came up with an idea that you are passionate about, like last year I met earlier this year I met a man. No, last year I met him and he delivered the program earlier this year on the beach and he said, yeah, I have a real good karate idea for schools in Tobago. And I said, all right, if you believe in it, then develop it, send the proposal. And he sent it and we fund the entire, uh, we fund the program. So we in the community, we as Tobagonians, we know what we want for our communities. We know what we want for our, uh, our athletes. It's about submitting your proposals, doing so on time, sending your supporting documents, and we would assist to the best of our ability. Of course, our budget helps both Tobagonians and Trinidadians, so we have to be mindful. Into, and the good thing is that Tobagonians have two bites of the cherries because in the same way central government offers grants, the Tobago House of Assembly has several grants being offered. It's not publicized as central government does, and we don't know where to find the forms, but the grants are being distributed. So it's about putting people into contact with um, the different services of the central government so they could improve their lives and improve their position so they can fend for themselves. So you heard it here, guys. You are definitely doing yourself a disservice if you don't go to the office of your MP to see what is available um, for you. Regardless of political affiliation, you should definitely tap into the opportunities that are there. I mean, you can't not go, not yeah. find out, and then yeah. say that there is nothing. So yeah. as you indicated earlier on in the conversation, persons have that responsibility to seek their own mm -hmm. interests and mm -hmm. benefit from everything that there is to benefit from. Unfortunately, so, we well, wronged up the conversation this let me, morning let me and touch I'll on allow one you thing, to... Please. Yeah, I want to, to touch on to, one thing because we do not touch on the area of sport. And every time we speak to Jamaicans, they say Tobagonians have a specific talent. They have a specific build. We know that once they put in the work, they'll they'll get far. And you see that Tobagonians dominating RSS Phoenix, the Roxborough dominated secondary school track and field competition. Same thing in primary schools. We need to get our sporting area together in Tobago. I looked on as Tobagonians uh, giggled and laughed. Even the former secretary, um, who, who was a former secretary of sport and community development was uh, giving a joke or chuckling at the, the fact that we didn't meddle. They say Trinidad not meddling at all. But if everybody in their own corner look at what they sent to the national team, how many Tobagonians did we send to the national team? What is happening to Tobago clubs? And what is happening to the Tobago Athletic Committee that has been defunct for so many years that's responsible for the welfare of Tobago athletes? What's happening with sporting facilities in Tobago? We can talk about Dwight York Stadium all day long, but the thing is, Dwight York Stadium is moving. But what is happening with the indoor facility? What is happening with the playgrounds and the recreational spaces in your community? How come you're not complaining about that? So are you truly upset or are you truly interested in sporting facilities if you turn a blind eye to the issues in Tobago, but you, you make a political issue out of Dwight York Stadium? We had to check ourselves because it's not only about all development. I'm 42. I'm, 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 I'm getting down in age. Hmm. What about those high schoolers? You see tremendous, you look at Makita, look at, um, I think her name is Makita Bain, that young tennis player. And they're hmm. saying this girl is going to be like Venus and Serena or even better. What are we right. doing to her benefit? I'm, I'm, I'm you glad know? that you brought that up because that issue came up earlier mm -hmm. of the international accreditation of the, tracks. The, the, the facilities. Not the facilities, the tracks. The tracks. Yeah, for, people keep um, on saying the facilities, for, but it's for, the tracks. Yeah. For the athletes to run on in order to qualify order for to qualify. any international meet. Right. What is the status of that? Yes. And why... Was it a situation where the accreditation elapsed? Okay, so it's not just that the accreditation elapses. Why did the uh, why weren't we recertified? So the world world athletics changed its um, changed what they want the composition of a track to be. So they've changed uh, their regulations as it relates to tracks, not only for Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. all over to the world. So anybody with a track built with uh, built under the former specification or built before 2011, no matter how good your track looks or how good you think it functions, will that let's say we are not renewing past December 2023. So here we are. 
in in 2023 we had the commonwealth youth game schedule what do we do shut down you can't you have to leave it open so people could get ready for the commonwealth games and we can host the commonwealth games so that takes us now into 2024 and olympic year you can't run on the track and refurbish it at the same time so you would have to shut down at some point in time can, can you imagine us shutting down before the olympics what the cry would have been and we don't make that decision independently we speak to the entries we speak to the athletes and work with them so that would mean you have to wait until after the olympics of august 2020 it's not only about that, it's about finding a contractor who's willing to do the work at a decent price. When we first standard for Dwight York Stadium, we came in at one price. Uh, that was before 2023. But we then had to hold up for Commonwealth Youth Games. Now, when we return to the same service provider, they tripled the price. Are we going to just go ahead and take it because we're desperate for a track? We have to look at the costing and what we can afford and if that contractor is able to deliver a proper track. It's not only raising up the top the top surface. Like for instance, at Hazy Crawford Stadium, uh, when you raise up the top surface, they recognize that the subsurface is, is destroyed. It has to be done over. So it's about finding uh, a contractor that's willing to do the work and do it properly and get it certified and so on at a reasonable at a reasonable cost just because you know the, the government is is desperate or, or or we need to get it done don't mean you're going to quadruple the price because if we go ahead and we accept and pass that now they're at least going to be happy but next three years when uh you compare the cost of that to another country you could be saying i teeth Yes. And when we don't do, don't follow the right process, I just give you a track because I select somebody because you want a track right now. And we don't follow the procurement regulations or the rules that the Auditor General and the Ministry of Finance have set. Nobody going to be, be begging sympathy for me on social media or anyway. And you know how they do me on social media. <laughs> so the least I can do is follow the rules and, and, and do so properly and try to give too big to Begonians and Trin Begonians value for money for at least to qualify. There is no team to qualify for right now because the next games is Carifta Games. That is for the younger athletes, I think 14 to 18, somewhere there, right? And that's in April of next year. The qualifiers for Carifta, so the making of the team would be for next year, March 7th. And three years told us that March 7th is when they want to start their qualifiers. So there's no making of the team before that. And so we have that time to put down the track. We are hoping that we can award the contract before the year ends through a proper procurement pro process to a contractor who is able and competent that comes in within the price range that we have budgeted um, or maybe a little over but not anything too crazy to get the government or to get me in trouble yeah so uh we're hoping to get it delivered by march 7th in time for the uh trials for the carifta games all right yeah well unfortunately time really did <laughs> run away on us this morning there's so much more that we can um get into but i believe you know one of the key things is to come to your office yes. tap into what is there to offer regardless of your your side of the political right. spectrum we get to serve war, everybody and yeah benefit from yes. what is there yes. instead of complaining about there not being opportunities go and see what opportunities and there I are. And I think I can simply so, say there is not one Tobago athlete that has applied for funding not one that has applied for funding in time with their documents that has not gotten funded. If you find one, holler at me. There are athletes on social media making all kinds of comments, issuing a GoFundMe. Why are you on here issuing a GoFundMe, supported by politicians egging you on? They're not directing you to the Lalan Gordon Fund. They're not directing you. We are telling you how to apply for funding, but no, you prefer to have a GoFundMe and wreak politi political havoc online. Come on, that's crazy. There is not one athlete that has applied uh, with all their documents and in time that hasn't gotten funding. Find me one. Right. So there's opportunities to tap into. There are resources for Tobagoians to benefit from both at the THA level as well as the central mm -hmm. government level. We have a duty to benefit from That's right. both sides of the cherry. Take, take you know, yeah. two bites as you indicated. So mm -hmm. regardless of what it is, tap in and get the benefit from having your representatives in the parliament who are ministers. We have to wrap up the discussion this morning, but is there anything that you want to leave with Tobagonians before we go? I want to say to Tobagonians, we have a duty to Tobago. 
We are Tobagonians first and anything else after. And we need to focus our conversations and our deliberation on the future of Tobago, on the Tobago that we are developing and building out, not only for ourselves, but for the future generation. And we need to hold everyone to account. PNM, PDP, TPP, those who are non-aligned, because at the end of the day, it must be all about Tobago's uh, development. So get involved, listen, participate in the discourse, be uh, fair, be just, and let's do what we must to get Tobago to where it needs to be together. All right, excellent. Guys, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back after this. See you soon. Mm -hmm.